Protogen named the protomolecule and decided it was a tool that could redefine what it meant to be human. Jules-Pierre Mao had treated it like a weapon. It killed humans, therefore it was a weapon. But radiation killed humans, and a medical x-ray machine wasn't intended as a weapon. Holden was starting to feel like they were all monkeys playing with the microwave. Push a button, a light comes on inside, so it's a light. Push a different button and stick your hand inside, it burns you, so it's a weapon. Learn to open and close the door, it's a place to hide things. Never grasping what it actually did, and maybe not even having the framework necessary to figure it out. No monkey ever reheated a frozen burrito. Hey guys, Pete here. In the world of the expanse, the protomolecule is the thing that changed everything. Holden's thoughts from Abaddon's Gate there do a pretty good job of summarizing what I talked about in the first video of the series. Humanity is the monkeys, poking the shiny box, making guesses about what it does. While everyone was fighting to control it, the protomolecule was busy working. And in this video, we're going to look at what it built. I'm going to explain what we know about the ring gate, about the ring network it's connected to, the station at the middle of the hub, and what we learned about its builders as we explore this area. As a warning, this will contain spoilers through Season 4. I'll also be referring to the source material without giving future book spoilers away. The details are slightly different between the books and the TV shows. To save time, I won't be pointing out those differences. I'm going to tend towards what comes from the books. But overall, we end up in the same place no matter how you get there. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. So as the monkeys were poking things with sticks, the protomolecule was busy building. It hijacked Arrow's station, hurled itself towards Earth, got rerouted to Venus where it crashed on the surface, the work continued there until one day it emerged as a giant mechanical squid looking thing that flew itself out past Uranus and assembled this giant gate. We refer to this gate as Soul Gate since it connects our system to the ring network. The ring itself is about a thousand kilometers across. We're not exactly sure what it's made of, but the protomolecule's influence in its construction seems to make it pretty durable, considering that some of this stuff has lasted for billions of years. The gate is a wormhole, and passing through it is somewhat like passing through a doorway. You're in one room, you pass through, and you wind up in a different room. The wormhole connection here is that these two rooms aren't next to each other. So passing through appears to be instantaneous, but in the act of doing so, you travel a great distance. So that's all pretty straightforward. Of course, we don't understand how the builders mastered wormhole technology, or how they created the protomolecule that can basically be programmed to go out somewhere and build something like this. But what the gate is and what happens when you go through it, that should be pretty easy to follow. And when we look at the network it's connected to, their motivations seem fairly obvious. The builders were an advanced civilization who were able to create wormholes. It only makes sense that they would want to locate other habitable systems relatively nearby considering the vast size of space so that they could go and explore, find new resources, get a better understanding of what's out there, you name it. In my first protomolecule video, I explained the delivery system of how they created these different gates that eventually formed the gate network. A question I see come up a lot is what does it look like from the other side? I would assume that it looks exactly the same, and I'm guessing that that means you could enter it from either direction. That said, we never get a description of this or an answer to that question, but remember, when you pass through it, you end up somewhere else. You end up inside this hub where all the ring gates are connected. I've seen this referred to as a non-space, but as mentioned, it's really a mystery still at this point. Where the hub is located, where it resides, or where it physically exists is also a mystery. There's no stars inside this space, and there's nothing that you could see on the outside that you could use to locate where you are. We call this the slow zone because of what happened there. It measures roughly 1 million kilometers across, surrounded by the 1300 plus gates, which are all wormholes that lead to different systems. The ring station at the center of the hub is one place we've actually been. Holden travels there, he's followed by Martian marines, and in that process we learn more about the builders than at any other time in the series. As far as specs, the station is about 5 kilometers in diameter. We're not sure what it's made out of, it has this blue glowing color to it, and it's made with something that appears to be metallic. There's no one on it, no one from the ring builder civilization anyway. 
but it does have an active security system. We see it activate that on the ships that pass through the Soul Gate Ring. That's where it gets its name, the Slow Zone, as it changed the speed limit. And we get an example of what it does to the Marines after it recognizes them as threats. This all seems to be built in. When the Martians first approach, Holden asks Miller if he can stop them. Basically, he says, yeah, I can, but whatever he would set in motion, he wouldn't be able to control it or have it do it in a way that wouldn't kill them. I think what's most interesting about the station and this security system is its actual age. It's ancient. We can imagine that it's been there for at least two billion years, and it's still operational. As far as its builders, this manifestation of Miller that leads Holden provides us some details about them. We don't know what they look like. We don't know what their biology is like, their history. We just know that at some point they sent out a bunch of probes that were loaded with protomolecule, which connected all these systems together. What we learn from Proto Miller is more about their extinction. And we know by his connection through the Proto Molecule and the fact that he's investigating, he's able to find records here. He's able to use Holden to get access to the system that they have constructed some sort of hive mind. And at this point in the story, they do seem to collect things, collect the consciousnesses of the life forms that they hijack. Julie Mao is the greatest example of this. On Eros, the living Miller was able to find her imprinted consciousness and interact with it. It's also clear by this ring network that's left behind and its ability to create this consciousness that resembles Miller to interact with Holden that it's created things designed to survive even after the civilization is gone. After the ring network was developed, the builders were wiped out. They were made extinct by unknown aggressors, some other civilization that we know nothing about. What we do learn from Miller at the ring station is that they used it as a weapon to destroy some of the systems that it was connected to. It did this by sending a beam of energy through the ring that caused the stars to explode and essentially vaporize everything in its system. They tried this repeatedly without any success, and so they eventually tried to quarantine they tried to deactivate the rings. That's why when they're first discovered in our story, the system isn't turned on. The quarantine didn't work either, though, and we don't know if it's because they shut down the rings or if the unknown aggressors did something beyond what we've seen. But at some point, the alien civilization, the ring gate builders, went extinct. Miller brought Holden into the ring station so that he could gain access. And in the process of that, Holden actually experiences all of this stuff happening. He sees it. In the show, we saw this as a sort of dream sequence, and he describes it in the book as feeling connected to the universe, but also to this hive mind. It says he felt the stars within him, the vast expanses of space contained by him. Thousands of voices, millions, billions lifted in chorus, and he was their song. As he's experiencing this, he sees a star go out. As more of the suns start to fail, he describes how insignificant it feels at first, but how he starts to feel fear. And after a hundred stars are taken out at once, he says this, What had been a song became a shriek. Holden felt his body shifting against itself, furious as a swarm of bees trapped and dying. In despair, the hundred suns were burned away, the station hurling destruction through the gates as fast as the darkness appeared. But the growing shadow could not be stopped. All through his flesh, stars were going out. Voices were falling into silence. Death rode the vacuum faster than light and implacable. He continues, He felt the decision like a seed crystal giving form to the chaos around it. Solid, hard, resolute. Desperation, mourning, and a million farewells one to the other. The word quarantine came to him, and with the logic of dreams, it carried an unsupportable weight of horror. But within it, like the last voice in Pandora's box, the promise of reunion. One day, when the solution was found, everything that had been lost would be regained. The gates reopened, the vast mind restored. After that, he wakes up, and Miller seems to have absorbed all this, and he does explain some of it to Holden. For one thing, he explains that, for as remarkable as Miller seems, he's nothing compared to the beings that created him. Since these defenses are built in, he can turn the network back on, but he isn't sure what's going to happen. If the unknown aggressors return, it's possible that this station will start blowing up systems again. We learn that the hive mind has a function, but also that through that last part of what Holden experienced, it is designed to outlast the people that created it. And it certainly does hint that there may be a way that that consciousness could be brought back. 
In the end, before Miller can explain what he learned, he disappears as Holden is apprehended by the Martians. What's curious about where we're at in our story is that here are these monkeys again poking stuff with sticks. The rings are again open and there's no way that they're not going to use them. So we'll talk a little bit about what they find right after this. I need to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get lost in creativity. I've been taking the course Mastering Cinematic Compositions in Video and Film by Jordi Vandeput. It's well put together and it's taught me a lot about setting up shots. If you're uncertain about what's next, creative challenges and productivity classes can be a great way to help you structure your time and set up achievable goals. At a time when so many important conversations are happening in our world, your voice is more essential than ever. Explore classes to unlock your creativity for social good. Skillshare offers membership with meaning, connect with the support of fellow creatives, and enter a community of encouragement, communication, and inspiration. Whether you're looking to fend off boredom, focus on self-care through creativity, or join a similarly creative community, Skillshare is the place to keep you learning. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And after that, it's only around $10 a month. So check it out. I think you'll like it. In season four, we did see that in desperation, refugees on the Barbapacola ran the blockade and transited through the Illus ring and were able to make it to the surface of this planet, Illus. They found that it was resource rich. There was a lot of lithium there that's valuable and it wasn't difficult to extract. And if they turned out to be successful, then there would be a lot of people who wanted to follow their lead and get out to these 1300 other systems. Beyond its resources, the other thing Illus had were large artifacts, large towers that were created using protomolecule by the Ring Builder civilization. From what they can tell, Illus was once used to generate energy for the bigger project connected to the alien civilization, and there was a lot of structures left behind. It appears that they used protomolecule to do some terraforming. This would appear to go beyond the initial phase of development when they sent a probe to this system and that built the ring. This appears to be something that came after that to better utilize that for their civilization. And since the Rosinante brought active protomolecule with them, that provided access for Proto Miller to poke around in the system and turn things back on. In the process of that, they discovered an artifact which seems to be left behind by the unknown aggressors. They call it a bullet. It's essentially a round void where Proto Molecule can't go. When this system starts to defend itself from the people that are on the planet, Proto Miller is able to pass through this and everything gets shut down. Before he does that, he tells Holden about the protomolecule that's on the Rossi, tells him to destroy that, which he does, and that severs their connection. And I think that's the right place to bring this video to an end. Next time, I'll talk about the bullet, what we know about that. I'll get more into the investigator and how he works and what we know about that from the books. The ring gates really do change everything again. There are good reasons why people want to go out and colonize these systems. But there's a whole lot going on in the background that they truly don't understand. Holden has seen a vision of what happened to the last civilization that was using these rings to move across the Milky Way. And now they're gone. Miller was in search of a solution, not only of what happened, but how to fix things. And obviously he didn't come across that before the connection was cut. It's wild when you think about it. The station's been sitting there for something like 2 billion years, just waiting for something to come through one of those rings. Now humanity has done that, and they're rushing through other ones to try to make a stake for themselves. We can't say what it is, but something's bound to happen, right? So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like if you did. Please leave any questions you have in the comments. Make sure you subscribe. I'll be doing more Expanse videos throughout the rest of its run. At some point, I will revisit this series with another part, and I would appreciate the support. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.